This video is about paper chromatography and I would also recommend you watch the video on gas chromatography because both types of chromatography are ways of separating substances. Gas chromatography is an instrumental method so it's fast, it's accurate and it's sensitive um, and it's used to separate compounds um, in loads of different situations like um, drug testing in sport and things like that. Paper chromatography is a lot slower process. It's tend to use to have a look at um, banned food dyes and things in, um, in foods and it allows for the separation of coloured compounds from a sample. For example if I were to put um, a blue pen here um, on the chromatogram then although it looks blue, in fact there'll be lots of different colours inside this pen ink which make up the colour and if I put the blue ink on the bottom that would allow for the separation of the coloured compounds up the paper or similarly if I put a, a food dye on there, it might be a red food dye and actually within that food dye there are several different colours making that up and you might, might want to test to see if there is a banned substance so you could have a look at your food dye and then for example compare that to the pattern that the banned substance would show to see if any of your food dyes contained that substance. And the way you do that is you have a setup similar to this one whereby you have a piece of chromatography paper and near the bottom you'd have a pencil line onto which you would place a small dot of your sample. So before um, this was actually put into the water there would have been a, a small pencil line above the actual water line itself so probably around here and onto that pencil line you'd put small samples of the things that you would want to separate like so. It's important that this is a pencil line because if you did it in pen then you would have had loads of colour also spreading up the paper from the pen. So on a pencil line above the line of the solvent so it doesn't all smudge you would put your um, small dots of your samples. And once you put those into a solvent um, such as water, okay so the solvent here is often water your substance will dissolve in the solvent and the solvent will be what carries it up the chromatography paper and then the different compounds in there will just um, go different distances up the paper so you can see here that you've got an orangey colour and then a pinky colour and then a blue colour a green colour and finally you probably can't see that but the top there's a yellow colour so all the colours separate out mm -hmm. Whereas you started off with um, one substance at the bottom, the compounds in that separate out because they dissolve in the solvent and they travel different distances up the paper. So it's important to know that in paper chromatography it's the solvent or water which carries the substances up the paper. Okay, so we'll just outline a couple of the steps that we've just gone through. So first of all, in setting up this, we would draw a pencil line. and place a small sample of the substance you want to test on the pencil line Okay, and uh, this is all on the chromatography paper. We then have to dip the chromatography paper in a solvent. So dip the bottom of the chromatography paper in solvent. For example water and to separate out the substances dissolve 
in the water so the compounds in the sample dissolve in the solvent and are carried up the paper and then just the idea that different substances travel different distances up the chromatography paper so the compounds will separate compounds in the sample will separate because they will travel different distances up the paper Okay. I've outlined it like this because sometimes they'll ask you a method question on chromatography and they might ask you to describe this actual process that you do to analyse a, um, a sample. But the important thing is that finally, once you've done this and once you've got your um, sample separated on the paper into your different compounds, you need to be able to compare it to a known chromatogram of another substance and I'll come on to that in just a minute so finally the most important thing perhaps is that you then compare to a known chromatogram of the um, substance you're looking for so that might be like the banned food dye or something that you're looking for so compare to a known chromatogram of the substance you're looking for or of the compound you are looking for just about to squeeze that on there so I should have said before that once you've got your piece of paper out and dried with your samples spread out we then call this a chromatogram okay this is an example of a um, chromatogram that you might have as a result of doing a paper chromatography experiment and you can see you've got three different samples A, B and C and you're comparing that to a known um, chromatogram for your banned substance that you want so let's suggest that this X is our banned substance and we are checking the food types a, B and C okay so these are uh, the, the artificial colors in food or whatever that we're testing um, to see if it contains this banned substance yeah. okay we want to know whether A, B or C contains this banned substance X and if we pop this um, in a solvent the solvent will then carry the substances up the paper and allow the compounds within there to separate so if you look at um, X you can see that once it's put on the pencil line at the bottom it shows this pattern here and we then need to compare that to A, B and C to see if any of these contain the banned substance X and if you have a look um, across you can see that B has marks on the paper at the same distances 
as substance X. So actually B contains the band substance X. So B contains the band substance X. They, all, they also might ask you um, things like how many compounds are in each sample. So that's shown just by how many dots there are above this line where you place your sample in the first place. So A has three different compounds, B has two different compounds, C has two compounds and X has two compounds. So we've put our samples in the water or in the solvent They've dissolved in solvent and the compounds have separated up the paper. We can then compare that to our known chromatogram of our band substance to see if any of these contain our band substance. So whereas paper chromatography is used to normally separate um, coloured chemicals within a substance, obviously in an exam paper you, you rarely get... Um, a chromatogram shown in colour so often the chromatograms are just in black and that's why you have to look at the position of the um, chemicals that are in your substance rather than having a look at the colours. So on the first one you could see how the colours in the sample were separated out but just bear in mind that in your exam you'll probably even though they'll talk about colours have just a black and white chromatogram.